Hey, this is OXDF, and uh, today I'm looking at AHS 512, a crypto challenge from the Hack the Box, Hack the Boo CTF that was held uh, last week, in the end of October. Um, it's a crypto challenge. It's the day five challenge. So while this is a beginner CTF, it's definitely on the harder side. Although the good news is it doesn't really need any math. It's more of just a logic bug. So um, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. They give us a server.py. Um, and they also give us a Docker to connect to. Let me go ahead and grab actually that IP import. We can connect um, connect in here. We can run. Um, so it says, hashes are spooky. In this game, you have to face your fears. Can you find a collision in the updated SHA-512? SHA find a message that generates the same hash as this one. Enter your message. And if I write like, please subscribe, it says a non-hexable decimal number was found. Let's enter some A's and conditions not satisfied. Um, so that, that we can fuzz this, but like something, something is, uh, we'll, we'll want to look at what we got here. Right. Um, we will want to, let's go ahead and open up, uh, this and take a look at server.py. Um, so I'm actually going to start by going all the way down to the bottom here and looking at the, so this is if name equals main, which is what it will be run when it's run, if it's run by, you know, calling this file. Um, it's going to create a TCP server. Um, it's going to use the handler function for to handle requests coming in, and it's going to serve forever. The handler class here is simply going to call this handle function each time some, there's a connection to this. So TCP connection to this port, uh, pass it to the handler class, or handle class, which is going to call main uh, with the request. We will come down here to main, and in main, it's going to print the welcome message. That's what we saw. Um, it's going to take an original message, pumpkin spice latte, and it's going to call the AHS 512 hash on it. Um, it's going to then print that message. Um, it's going to receive a message from us, um, which it's going to convert from hex into bytes. Um, it's going to hex digest that message. And then if the original message equals the digest and, sorry, if the original digest and my new digest are the same and the messages are not the same, then it'll print the flag. So I have to find a collision, which is what it said. Um, that's basically it, except for let's go look at the hash. Um, when each time it take, does a hash, so here and down here, um, it's going to create a new AH512 instance, and then it's going to call the hex digest function. So when it creates a new instance, it's going to call this init function. Um, init is going to save the message into self.message so that the object gets that message persistently between calls. Um, and then it's going to call set a key using self.generate key. Um, looking at self.generate key, it's going to pick a random integer between two and one minus or one less than the length of the message. Um, but it's only going to accept that key if the key divides evenly the length of the message. It's a bit odd. Um, we we'll want to take a second here and think about this. Um, this key is going to be used later on, and it's going to mean that each time I go to make a hash, it's actually going to be different, which is not it's no it's not even a hash anymore right that's not that's breaking one of the fundamental uh principles of a hash but we'll live with it for a second um but the good news is let's look we have um where's our message here at least this original message that goes in um there is echo minus n like that into word count minus c is 20 bit 20 bytes 20 characters um if we look up here and think about this for a second, here's our, between two and 19, what are possible keys that evenly divide 20? Well, two does, two and 10, four and five, and that's it. So there's only four possible keys. So for any given string, you're gonna get back one of four hashes, which means if I submit the right answer, there's a one in four chance it's gonna match the hash that was already chosen because this generate key, this init function and generate key is gonna be called each time the you know, the a new instance is created. So, if, you know, on the original and on my input. So um, I'm just gonna have to know that, that I'm gonna have to send it a bunch of times to get it to work. Um, the other thing that gets called then is this hex digest, which is gonna take the initial message and it's gonna call self.transpose to make transposed. It's then gonna pass that into self.rotate to get rotated. And then it's gonna take a five SHA-512 of that and return the result. SHA-512 is not broken. There's no known um, collisions in SHA-512. If Hack the Box had created one or expected you to create one in a beginner CTF, um, that'd be ludicrous. So we can assume something must get screwed up between the transpose and the rotate. 
Um, we can go look at these. Um, rotate is kind of doing some bit swapping. Transpose looks like it might be um, rearranging the order, I think. Um, but really what I want to do to look at this is to put in some print statements. So we'll do print um, self.message. Put an equal sign there so that we get it. It'll, that, I'll show you what that does in a second. Um, when we run it, we can do print like this, and we'll do transposed. Put the equal sign there as well, and then we'll do print uh, rotated equals like that, and we're good. So now let's go over here and try to run this. Um, if we do Python server.py, ah, okay. So right on line one, it's trying to import secret. Let's go up and look at that. So what it's doing is it's reading a flag string from a secret module that we don't have. Um, that's because the server has it and we don't. Um, we can just comment this out. Oops, not, not quite like that. And we can put like flag equals hack the box, not the real flag like that. And now what we've done is we've basically created the fake flag object. So if we ever see that, we'll know we've got the right thing. And then we can go to the Docker instance and try to get the real thing. So let's come here and we can do 127.001.1337. And now, when just before we even put our input in, it is generating that pumpkin spice latte thing. And so the message is pumpkin spice latte, bang. Transposed is messing up the order here a little bit. And then rotated, I don't quite know what, you know, we saw it was messing up, messing with the bit order. Um, it's printing them as integers, so it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, um, but it's there. Um, if we let's kill this and come back again, so we can notice that transpose in this case is P-I-U-C. If we go up to where the last one was, it was P-K-S blah. So this is that whole, there's four keys and I got a different key this time, so the order is slightly different. We'll want to make note of that. Um, beyond that, this isn't super helpful yet. So let's take, let's, let's look at a bitwise comparison. So let's go down here and add some more, add some more prints here. Oh, I did tell you I'd tell you what the equal sign does. The equal sign is what prints this self.message equals in front. So anytime you're printing with an F string like this, if you add the equal sign to, after the variable, it'll put the name of the the name of the variable before it prints the content. So it's just kind of useful for debugging. Okay, so right after we print transposed, why don't we do another print? And this time we will do um, a list comprehension. And I think list comprehensions are often scary to beginners. I, they're very intuitive to me and I love them, so I use them a lot, but um, I know they can be hard for people. Um, so we're going to put the, the square brackets to make a list. And we'll start by just saying C for C in transpose. So right now, what we're going to do is nothing, not something very exciting. Transpose is a list. I mean, it's technically a string, but Python will treat a string as a list. And it's going to say for each character C in transpose, make the item in this list C. That's not very interesting. But what we can do is we can say, uh, let's make an F string here. where We print C. And we're going to print it as binary. Um, and that now, for each character in transpose, we're going to get the eight bits that, in fact, let's pad this, we'll say the eight bits that match, that represent that character. Um, and we can do the same thing down here for rotated. So we can say print, um, and we can even reuse C here, or we can do something else, right? We can say C2 for C2 in rotated. Um, now we don't have to pick a new variable name there, but it might be more clear to people what we're looking at here. So we'll do that. And we'll do eight byte, but that's sort of our format, and print that. So now, go back over here, we can kill our server, we can restart it, we can reconnect. So now we get transposed, and we get the numbers, and then we get rotated, and we get this. So we can actually say, what happens, you know, for example, let's look at this, um, let's find a good one to start with. Uh, this one right here is the I, so this is the I. Um, I'm going to open up another, actually I'll come up. I don't know if this is good or not. We'll try this. Um, we'll open Python up here, and we'll say, what is uh, ord of the i character? So in ASCII, the i is 105. And if we do an int on this number like that, mod base 2, it's also 105. So all that's happened here is we're printing out the, each of these characters, p, i, u, c, m, etc., as binary. In bits. Um, now we're taking the rotated ones and printing them out as well. So we can look and see here, what we did in the code was we we shifted down uh, four or three, four. So we shift 
down 105, 4. So if we take um, 105 down 4, our result is 6. And if we want to view that as binary, we can do a f string around this and print it as binary. And so now you can see the result is 110. Um, we, then we do the same thing, except we shift up three times. So let's do let's see what that looks like. Like that. Now here, we sh put shifting up, we add, we add zeros to the right side, and we get the whole thing. There's one other trick, though, and that is that they are XORing by FF. So when we XOR by FF, we kind of remove anything greater than 8 bits. Like this. And so now you can see what we've done. The first bit is getting the bottom to be 001, or 110. And then we know these are all zeros, but then when we OR those together, we can come here and say uh, 105 down, down, 4, or like that, we're going to get this result here. So this, and that's the result we see here. Um, so you can almost think of it, now, I think I, probably what the author's mistake was, was thinking of it as taking the low, taking the top three and putting them at the bottom and taking the next, the low four and putting them at the top. The challenge is, and the mistake comes when we look at something like um, P. Because in P, we get 111, so that would go to the bottom. So I'll go to the bottom. But when we, oh, well, here, we'll just do it. Um, board P is 112. Um, when we shift, uh, when we shift 112 down four, we get the three. We get the three at the very bottom. That's fine. Um, when we shift, when we shift them up three, or 112, or we need to ox. We need to or that with or with um, ff. So we'll do that just again. The difference is, we didn't. This thing is only seven bits. And so when we shift it up three, uh, sorry, the, this is only set, well, all these are only seven bits. When we shift it up three, that means two of these are gonna roll off up the, off the screen, you know, to bits nine and 10, and they're not gonna survive the OXFF. But this third one right here is, and it's gonna survive it in this high bit right here. And the reason this is the problem is, that means it's possible that there's more inputs that cause, that will um, lead to this same output because the size has changed. And so what we need, if we want to think about this, is something where if we put a 1 in front of it here, it's not going to change this result. And so if we want to think about that, let's see. What's the easiest way to think about what's going to happen? That means um, if the 1 is up on the 8, when we shift down 4, that means that this 16-bit is going to, you know, this is 1, 2, 4, 8. So the 8, sorry, the 8-bit is going to stay on. So we want something that the 8-bit would have been on anyway. Um, and we want this 16-bit to be on as well, because when we shift up to the 8, we want it to come down the same way. Um, that's confusing, I think, but let me show you an example of that. And that's this U right here. So if we do ORD of U, we get 117. If we, do, if we shift U down like this, we get one. We get one, one, one at the bottom. So our bottom four, three bits are going to be one, one, one. That's fine. If we shift, if we do our um, this up with one seventeen, we're going to get one o one o one. And so the trick is, what happens if we do one seventeen plus one twenty eight? We turn on that high bit. This is going to look exactly the same. And if we shift down by four, now we're going to have an extra bit here, but that bit's going to be on anyway when we OR these together. And so we're actually going to get the same thing. And so to see what that looks like, if we put the whole thing together, where's my whole thing? There it is. If we do, um, I, don't, I should 117 plus 128 and 117 plus 128, I could figure out what that is. We are going to get right here. The same value as, let's see, u is here, so here. Uh, one, let's see, where's my u? Oh, sorry, here. 10101111. So, 117 plus 128 is equal to 245. Uh, two, 
45.hex. Can I do it this way? I don't think, uh, can I, I think it's, let's see, hex, like that. Yep, so F5. So if we replace a U with an F5, we should be good. Um, so let's try this out. We'll grab pumpkin spice latte like this. And let's see, oops, that was my, okay, so we will um, paste that in. This is our string. Uh, we'll do it as bytes. And we want to replace our U with OX F5, like that. So that's our string. Um, we want to convert that to hex. So we will, um, I forget exactly how to do this. Can we just do um, as hex, is that right? I need an underscore. We just do dot hex. Yeah, there we go. So we can see 70, there's our F5, blah, blah, blah. So if we connect to our server now, we paste that in. Um, condition not satisfied, let's try again. Condition not satisfied, let's keep trying a few more times here. And I think we're gonna get it in a second. Um, you might have thought we'd get it by now. Oh, let's see. Treating. Oh, okay. No, that's OXF5. That seems good. Oh, man, it took a lot of tries, but we got not the real flag right there. Um, so let's try going back to the main server. And I'm going to put RL wrap in here. What that's going to allow me to do is up arrow, <laughs> and I got the flag. It only took two tries there. Um, so that was super, I, I think that was a super confusing one. Hopefully you're able to follow the explanation and tracing it through. Um, if that was confusing to you though, what I would really recommend is open up a Python terminal and play with converting these things around. Um, if you're not comfortable with these format strings and how I was printing things as binary, like play with it, like put some numbers in and see what it looks like. Um, if you're comfortable with that, but you didn't quite follow the bit moving around, like Play with it. Like, just get into a Python terminal. It's so all you need is a Linux machine or even a, actually a Windows machine with Python. Um, type Python and start to mess with it. And you're that's how you get better at these. That's how you develop these skills. Um, that's how you start to be able to do this kind of stuff. Is um, find a place you're not comfortable and explore. And hopefully you can do it along with a video like this, and uh, it'll make a little bit more sense. So um, definitely a confusing one. Uh, one of the more challenging ones from the CTF, but uh, I think kind of a fun one in the end. So. Thanks for sticking around with me till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you next time.